as you know, the voters back in 2020 gave us the authority, the county and the city, the authorization to move forward with tax allocation districts in Henry County and in the municipalities. Uh, this will be the first uh, tax allocation district in Henry County and in the municipalities. And with this, we see this as an economic development tool to help us uh, grow our vibrant downtown. Uh, as you know, over the last 25 year plus years, the city of Stockbridge downtown has, even though we've had public investment, was lacking private investment and growth and development as compared to our sister cities um, of Locust Grove, Hampton, and McDonough. Um, when they are created, uh, a, a base digest value is certified by the state. In the Stockbridge case, it's about $35 million. It's not a big tad. Um, and if the county and the school district uh, agree to pledge their increment, uh, the city, when it has, when its uh, millage rate goes into effect, will also pledge its increment, uh, which is the growth in property values within uh, the district over time and the difference in tax collections within that district between the base when the TAD was created in that given year. And each year, if there is increment, uh, the, the participating jurisdictions um, work out an agreement to deposit that increment in a TAD special fund managed by the city, and that is used for redevelopment projects. And there is really no cost to the county and school district, um, but if the city is successful, projects occur, uh, investments are made, uh, then that increment goes to the TAD fund. Um, the purpose of the TAD in Stockbridge is to help the city create a downtown um, in what is around, you know, the, the small village uh, of, of Stockbridge next to City Hall. So we gave them some examples of cities that have done uh, downtown projects with TADs. Um, to create a TAD, it has to be inside a redevelopment area, which must satisfy certain definitional requirements that are in the statute. And in, in this area that we looked at in Stockbridge, the poverty rate among families is 18%. Uh, this was based on 2021 data. Uh, the median household income in the redevelopment area was 26% less than the countywide median. Uh, the housing vacancy rate at the time was higher than the county average. Uh, apartment rents were 13% lower than the county. Retail rents were 26% lower than, excuse me, 22% lower than the county average. Um, we found about a million and uh, a half square feet of structures within this area that were more than 40 years old. The average taxable value of those structures, again, private taxable properties was only $51 a square foot. Um, property values hadn't been keeping up with inflation. In fact, commercial, there was evidence that commercial property values in the area had actually declined over the last 20 years in real terms. Population growth was slower than the county average. Housing values were 30, 37% lower than the countywide median uh, housing value of owner-occupied housing. And the housing stock in general was older than the county average. Doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is called insanity. Our goal is to do something different and expect a different outcome. Because we've been at this, the city's been at this for so long and had gained absolutely nothing. The use of this tool helps us to change the narrative and change the direction in which downtown Stockbridge grows and develop and become that thriving economic engine that it should be. Um, and that benefits all. And I find it very interesting that we all receive an email this morning from a city council person in Stockbridge asking us to roll back our county millage rate, and yet y'all are standing before us asking for a TAD. That's very conflicting. Sure. Right, and, and, and we won't go into the loss and other things that you all are bringing against us. You want us to, we talk about working together in collaboration we agreed to keep our loss at the same rate that it was. And now you want to come back and uh, bring attorneys in and, you know, uh, ask for more when I think that that's something you should take up with the cities.
and then uh, you want to ask us to do this for you and then you want to ask us to roll our millage rate back uh, <laughs> and uh, so we all got that same email this morning and it's really kind of disheartening and um, you know uh, I don't see anybody asking the school board to roll their millage rate back. Yeah, our city manager is going to speak to you just a second. And, and listen, commissioners, uh, we had no, no idea that you received something until just now. And whatever you received was unauthorized. We have a presentation here. Any individuals from the council had more, more enough the opportunity to be right here for this presentation and knew that it was happening. I'm sorry that you received that. I haven't received anything like that. I haven't seen my email, but I'm pretty sure that I haven't gotten anything. I'll it to you, Mayor Ford. Okay, well, it's, it was unauthorized. It was not what was necessary. What the presentation is what it is in this aspect. That's the thought process in which we are going forward on. It was totally unauthorized, and, and it wasn't proper. So, you know, two different things. Loss is this. This is obviously more of an economic development tool. That but doesn't... it impacts our bottom line. It impacts well, our bottom line. Well, Everything impacts our bottom line. Yes, ma'am. And what I can say is, and I think the consultant was, was quite clear on it, the district that we chose is not a district that's been increasing in terms of its, its tax value. It's actually been declining in reference to the, in the, in comparison to the rest of the county. I know that you said the concentration would be on uh, um, the property that you all own, but um, the TAD in general expands beyond that. So, say, for example, you, you got to vote for the TAD. What if you had someone that come in and wanted to develop on the other parcels and not necessarily on the what, what the city has in place? Uh, would you all be ready to, are, are, are you looking at doing this TAD in, fa in phases or are you looking at when you put it out, you're going to put the complete plan out? I, I guess, you know, right. I'm, I'm trying to get some idea of a timeline. Um, if a development, for instance, came in on a piece of property, um, and I'll give an example. rather than a blanket yes to our increment, it can be, hey, we can we want to evaluate on a project by project basis to make sure that it actually makes sense for us to use our increment there, right? Now, hidden homelessness is what we've defined as those individuals and households that we don't typically see out in the public. These are individuals that might be sheltering with family or friends or sheltering in hotels. Today we're here to present our plan to address hidden homelessness in Henry County, which again is a result of the county's application to the Atlanta Regional Commission's Community Development Assistance Program. When people tend to think of homelessness, they think of visible encampments. But we're focusing on the individuals and families that live in hotels, motels, cars, and with relatives or friends. This is the manifestation of hidden homelessness. So the ARC felt that Henry County had this opportunity um, to address hidden homelessness and become a leader um, for other communities in the area. There are pretty strict definitions of hidden homelessness and this tends to exclude um, hidden homeless. And finally, we found that a lot of these approaches in Henry County tend to be more in response to homelessness rather than outright preventing it. And from our benchmark community analysis, we found that the most effective tool against homelessness was proactive prevention rather than reactive response. The creation of a county housing authority would be a complement to the city's existing housing authorities and would partner with them as the county housing authority would have additional agency and capacity to increase affordable housing units and create more stability within the county. And then last but not least, the creation of a landlord risk mitigation fund would help increase housing availability for those who have been evicted or have a criminal record. This fund would lower a landlord's risk if they did rent out their property to someone with an eviction or a criminal history as they would have a set amount that they could receive from the fund should they need to in any circumstance. This opens the housing stock a lot um, as those that have been evicted or have a criminal record tend to not be able to find 
a, a, an apartment that will accept them. And so they're spending more money in rent at the extended stay hotels as of right now. For transitional housing, we see a couple opportunities. Um, first is the conversion of one of the hotels that is currently housing uh, or sheltering this population into housing with wraparound services. Uh, partnerships with developers who are interested in affordable housing and willing to include wraparound services in conjunction with their development help the county and the tenants of those properties immensely. Another way to increase the affordable housing stock is the enactment of inclu inclusionary zoning. This is a policy change that requires a set percentage of affordable housing units with, within every new multifamily development. And then design standards is a little more intricate policy change, which helps to ensure that as developers make changes to the materials um, to bring down cost, manufactured homes, which are another low, house, low cost housing option, so the priority recommendations are those that help build a foundation and should take a year or less to implement. And uh, we do understand that, um, especially I'm looking at the priority short term, medium and long term, it is, it is a huge issue that we're dealing with. Um, and I, I do want to thank the chair um, for actually getting the grant from ARC to even do the study because um, uh, you have to have vision when you're trying to tackle a problem that a lot of people don't even want to recognize is a problem. So first of all. And, and I just want to say this is the thank you, you know, for doing this. I, I can't remember who I spoke to on the phone uh, doing the um, uh, initial uh, gathering of the information. We would love to, uh, Shannon, make sure that um, the board gets a copy of this presentation. Uh, and then we'll look at next steps as to how we need to move forward. You know, I've been talking about this from day one. Uh, when I walked in addressing the homelessness and uh, workforce housing uh, issues that we have here um, in our community that, um, that some don't want to recognize. So.